Gary Black, Ross Gerber, Warren Redlick, and Alexandra Mers are back on Twitter today, hammering out the pros and cons about whether Tesla should advertise and what kind of a campaign they should run and how much money they should spend or shouldn't spend. Well, I'm thinking, I, I, I could be wrong, but I don't think any of them have ever mounted an actual campaign, written copy, or know how to measure the ROI from an advertising campaign. So I've invited an expert on today to give you some input. Hi, I'm Randy Kirk. If this kind of information is valuable to you or just even entertaining, please hit the like button. And then, of course, I'd love to have you subscribe, hit the notify button, and then join my Patreon. Tomorrow morning, Saturday morning, actually, not tomorrow morning, Saturday morning, we're going to have a really special show where uh, Brian White is over in London or somewhere in England, anyway, attending the fully charged show, and he's going to be uh, he's going to be coming to us live from the show. So that should be fun. So hit the notify if you'd like to be reminded about that. Okay, our expert today has over fifty years of experience advertising products and services on almost every media except television. He owned an advertising agency and also a marketing consulting firm. He has launched over a thousand products in over a hundred markets for over 400 clients, clients, and also hundreds of products for his own businesses. Our guest is drum roll, please. Oh yeah, it's that's me. <laughs> so yeah, I've been doing some advertising. I, I started uh, advertising back when I think I was 23 years old and opened my first bike shop, uh, and I had to you know take out a yellow page ad, and that yellow page ad was extremely successful and gave me the theory that maybe I knew something about how to market and how to write copy and how to design an ad. Since then, I have uh, been very, very active in, as I mentioned, every media, uh, bus bench ads <laughs> included, um, except for television. All right, let's talk about advertising. First of all, let's stop confusing marketing and advertising. Almost 100% of the population believes that advertising is marketing and marketing is advertising. Well, that's just not true. Uh, they're, they're, advertising is a subset of marketing. Elon Musk is maybe the best marketer in, in history of all time. I mean, the guy's an amazing marketer. He is great at product design, at packaging, at pricing, at the communication of the vision, in the use of free media, in the approach to, get to publicity. All of those kinds of things, I could go on and on. I have, in fact, I wrote a book called The Elon Musk Method that talks about his expertise in marketing. He is an, an incredible marketer, okay? But advertising is just a subset of marketing. It is one tool. And Elon Musk has stated on many occasions that he doesn't like automobile advertising. He doesn't like advertising in general, but certainly doesn't like automotive advertising because the glitz and glamour with no substance idea that's designed to fool customers is not his cup of tea. I think that's a paraphrase of almost exactly what he has said on multiple occasions. But it doesn't have to be that way. I prefer guerrilla advertising. There's a famous book called Guerrilla Marketing that was put out many, many years ago. So I, that's my approach. I've always been a guerrilla marketer. Most of my clients, and I've had over 400 clients in my marketing consulting firm, most of those clients never spend a dollar other than my fee. They never spend any money on, on, uh, on any type of advertising. They just, it, I make a point to them early on that almost 100% of the advertising that I'm going to do for them is going to be free stuff like YouTube videos. I've done thousands of YouTube videos for my clients over the years. All right. So the idea of guerrilla marketing is to be very strategic. You want to identify the prospects and then you laser focus on using the lowest cost method to get useful information in front of that prospect. And then, of course, you want them to purchase. So some kind of call to action, some method for getting them to purchase. And then, of course, the best thing is if you can get some kind of way to capture their email or capture identifying information, uh, whether you close them or not, and then be able to remarket to them downstream, okay? That is the basics of guerrilla marketing. And then 
I, I did leave out one thing. It's always good if you can have some KPIs, some key performance indicators, some, some ways of measuring what you're getting for the dollar that you're spending in that marketing. Okay, now let's bring it down to Tesla. Tesla has a huge advantage over almost any other company when it comes to measuring advertising results. I've mentioned on a few of my other videos that I have some products up on uh, Amazon. Amazon is very similar to the situation that Tesla is in, where those products that I'm currently selling, I advertise those products every single day. And I can change that advertising. I can change it minute by minute based on what I'm seeing happening in terms of what people are buying of my products. Now I have a guy, I have an individual who specializes in that and I use him to make these minute by minute, day by day, week by week decisions based on how the return on investment is going. How many clicks are we getting? How many purchases are, are we getting out of those clicks? How much are we spending to get that many clicks and that many purchases? So it's something where we can minutely fine tune, literally if we wanted to, we could be fine tuning it by four hours or eight hours. It takes a little while to see the, the results, but it doesn't take very long. Well, Tesla's in exactly that same situation. They have their website. Every order goes through their website. So it's almost like Amazon. They can see people coming onto the website. They see where the people go on the website. They know if the individual goes and starts to make a purchase and fill out the form. They can then see whether that person decides to go ahead and complete the purchase, how far along they get in the purchase, and then if they do fall off. Now, the only thing Tesla is not doing, to my knowledge, so far I've not seen them do anything to try to capture the email of that individual if they decide not to buy. Obviously, they get all the information if they decide to buy, but I don't see them capturing any information that would help them to remarket to those individuals if they decide not to buy on any given day. That would be a huge improvement in what they're doing right now. So they're able to get this minute by minute, hour by hour information. And that means that if they did decide to do some specific advertising, some of this guerrilla type advertising, they would then be able to make very quick decisions. They would be able to do what we call A-B testing of content, put up this ad with a very slight difference. You put up this other ad, um, or you put up this video and how does that video do in terms of getting people to go to the site? And one of the ways that you measure that is sometimes you'll set up a separate landing page or a separate, even an entire, uh, an entire um, uh, uh, website, which has a different URL. So it could be, uh, you know, tesla.com slash forward slash promote. And then when people come to that particular location, you know, they're coming because of a promotion that you're running. You could have promote one, promote two, promote three. You could use different things on that forward slash. So this is a way that you can measure what people are coming, what, what's causing folks to actually arrive at the site in the first place. So as a result of that, you can, you can really get a refined setup with regard to your advertising. You can get lots of opinions. So now the next step is where are the prospects? Who are the prospects we should be going after? What is the decision tree of a prospect in terms that they, how do people think in terms of making the decision to buy a new car at all? And then if they want to buy a new car, how they decide which one, how does that all break out? So I did, I, uh, uh, I've had a couple of clients that have been in the, in the uh, auto industry. And so I had some background of this. But I did want to take another look and I started looking around. Boy, you can get a lot of opinions about how people make their decisions on a car purchase. Uh, I even asked ChatGPT and, and the, the answer I got from ChatGDP was fine, but it was just one more opinion that got added into my overall analysis. So now I've gleaned, uh, I don't know, I think it's about 10 reasons here of uh, how uh, people make this decision. And then and then after that, I'll, I'll go through those 10 reasons and those 10 steps. And then we'll talk about the ways that we could use those 10 steps that people go through in order to put together a strategy that'd be hugely useful. Okay, so what do people think about? The number one thing that they think about is the use case. 
that includes affordability. How much can they afford? What are they willing to spend? Even if they can't afford it, they might be able to spend, uh, be able to afford just a little more if it's going to do something really that they really consider to be important. What do they need the car to accomplish? Is it just transportation? Are there work applications like a salesperson who drives around in their car for 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 their employment? Um, what else do, is is there a hobby involved? Do they need space to be able to pack in hobby materials, um, skis on the roof rack, uh, things of this nature, bicycles on the trunk rack, and those kinds of things. Um, and then, uh, are how much of it is about making an impression? How much of it is a lifestyle look that they're trying to get? How much? That's another use case. Okay, who am I trying to impress? All right, so let's. That's number one. I, the use case seems to be the number one thing that people are making a decision based on. Within those use cases, I mentioned cost, but, but cost becomes slightly different. Um, the monthly payment or the lease payment, should I go with a, uh, a loan? Should I go with a lease? Then they have to look at, if they're smart, they're also looking at other costs of ownership, like the insurance, the gas mileage, and the maintenance. And of course, that's a big part of the Tesla story. Number three, identity issues. Does it look good on me? <laughs> Will it make the right impression on my family, friends, neighbors, customers, employees, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? Um, you know, we all have a, a thing that we think is a look, okay? It might be the way we wear our hair. It may be the way that we dress. Um, it may be the way that we even walk, okay? <laughs> so we're copying people that are, that we think are impressive in a lot of the things that we do. Uh, how do we feel about the way we look in our car? I, I've always laughed that, uh, you know, we buy a car for the exterior appearance when we are rarely ever looking at the car from the outside. We're looking at the car from the inside. Most of the time, we should be buying the car based on the interior appearance, but no, the outside is the impression that we're giving to our friends and neighbors. All right, number four, safety. There are individuals out there who say that safety is one of the two things that are most important in the car buying decision. Cars are awfully safe today, quite frankly. And yes, it's great that Teslas are the safest on the road, but the, I think the safety issue probably is becoming less and less of an issue. Now, there are new safety issues, things like, you know, will the car be broken into? Um, you know, are there ways the, of hacking the car? That's an issue for Tesla that they need to address. Um, there are issues with regard to driving in rough neighborhoods where you might get attacked. So safety is not just a matter of does it crash? And if it crashes, how safe are you? It also has to do with uh, other external issues. Um, and some people uh, feel much safer in a car that is large or lifted high up in the air where you can where you're looking down and you can see a lot of the world around you those are safety issues and believe me i've heard from many individuals that that's part of the decision making process all right and then of course parents uh probably are looking at safety uh, much more so that than people who are not parents number 5 performance um, some of that is covered above, but a large subset of folks want a car that is fast. That would be me. <laughs> always has been, always will be. Another subset would be things like off-road performance. And, and so there's a bunch of different performance attributes that a car might have that for some people, that's really, really critical. Um, luxury creep, number six, luxury creature comforts um, and other features. There's a long list of possible features that might cause a car uh, uh, that lacks those features to be not worth considering. So, you know, entertainment system day is a big deal. It's gonna become a bigger and bigger deal if we get into more and more autonomy, which we will. Uh, and in fact, at the point where it's fully autonomous, then the entertainment system is gonna be uh, way up on the list. Well, that's something that Tesla has a big lead in. So um, lumbar support, I happen to hate lumbar support and other people love maximum lumbar support. Well, having that lumbar support is a pretty minor, you know, expense, I think, but boy, it can, I, it can make a big difference 
in terms of the luxury that one feels. Things like that, leg room, for some people that are tall, head room, et cetera, those are all the kinds of creature comforts that sometimes can make or break a car. Uh, uh, one of the other ones for electric cars will be uh, the need, the speed uh, and the ease of charging, the range that the car gets and the battery life. All of those are going to be issues. Now, I think I said there were 10, apparently there were only six, but there were some subcategories there. Okay, so now let's talk about advertising in general. Advertising in general has one of several goals. One could be category awareness. In this case, the ad makes the case for electric vehicles as opposed to other kinds of vehicles. That would be a category awareness. This is something that uh, I've done with my own companies actually in the past where uh, some uh, certain product that we're selling, um, there's not just a lot of awareness among the cycling community about the product category. And by making the category more visible, it yeah, helps my competitors as well, but that overall awareness also drives uh, uh, sales for me. So category awareness would be number one, just getting people to be, in this case, aware of electric vehicles, the benefits and advantages of owning an electric. Number two would be the brand awareness or the improvements of that brand. In this case, Tesla and Model Y are probably the most critical. So with brand awareness, Tesla already has one of the best brand aware. The brand Tesla is one of the most recognized brands in the world. I forget where it's ranked now, but it's way up there in terms of both its awareness and its value. So again, Tesla has been a, an amazing marketing company. To be able to get that brand awareness without any television advertising, without any kind of advertising at all, really, lots of marketing again, but no advertising. So that's, again, a tribute. Now, is there as much brand awareness, let's say, of the Model Y or the Model 3? So is there a reason to bring more brand awareness to the sub-brands in addition to the Tesla brand? And is Model 3 a great name for a car? Uh, you know, there's this idea that... Uh, that we're going to have a new uh, uh, refresh and maybe there will be a new brand that goes along with that, we'll see. All right, um, so uh, number three uh, reasons for advertising or, or one of the goals for advertising is education about the benefits, uh, education about promotion, news about the product or a new version, news about pricing, for instance. You're trying to get information to the buying public that might impact a buying decision. This is what, you know, Gary Black and, and Ross and others are, even the ones who are against advertising say, hey, yeah, we need to educate the public. How can we get that education out there? Right now, it's been left up to basically the YouTubers. <laughs> We've been doing the educating and Twitter and whatnot. There's, uh, you know, a, a band of, a band of, of, of fellows, a band of, uh, of uh, uh, <laughs> of us uh, fanboys and fangirls that have been getting the information out there. Well, uh, Tesla could do a much better job. That would be a place where almost everybody agrees. Let's get the information out there that would help people make the decision. Number four, lifestyle. You're trying to tie your brand to a certain feeling or lifestyle. Very commonly, this is done with beer and with cars. Um, and this uh, this kind of lifestyle uh, advertising works best when there's not a lot of differentiation. So, you know, you can walk into a parking lot of cars right now, and it's really hard to tell, you know, this brand over here from that brand. I have walked up. You've done it, too. I've taken my key and put it in the wrong car. And I drive a Volvo, <laughs> you know, which is pretty differentiated, and yet still the shape. The overall is there's not a lot of differentiation and I've put my key in the wrong door. So when you don't have a lot of differentiation that you can talk about, then you go to this kind of lifestyle uh, kinds of things where you show glamorous individuals driving them in glamorous locations and, uh, and uh, going fast uh, down curvy roads. Okay, that's what you do. And that's the kind of stuff that Elon hates. So probably won't be a lot of lifestyle advertising, even if they go to advertising. Okay, there's a way, there's 
this list could go on and on and on. Uh, this is already going to be a very long video. Um, so look it up. Go to ChatGPT and say, what are the uh, the goals of advertising? <laughs> and you'll, I'm sure ChatGPT will give you a nice long list. All right. So now then, I've been watching the comments in my own YouTube channel. I've been watching the comments on Twitter and in the Tesla community. And I'd say that almost everybody talks about education is what is needed. And while Tesla is certainly a lifestyle statement, those for whom that is important are probably already sold, okay? So that's another good reason for not worrying about lifestyle type advertising. Now that may be different when it comes to the uh, the new Cybertruck where lifestyle again, well, no, it'll actually be the same. The lifestyle folks are gonna buy it anyway. And we're, what we're gonna be wanting to do is reaching out to the folks who use it for work um, because they may not be quite as quick to make a decision to go Cybertruck. All right. Um, so with all of that, I decided, okay, I need to come up with a campaign. Um, keep in mind, I have managed campaigns for over 400 clients, et cetera, et cetera. I've done a lot of this. Um, I've done a, so much of it that this kind of thing comes so easy that I wrote all of this up in about 25 minutes. <laughs> okay. So number one, I believe that the most likely buyers at these new low prices are those in the flyover states. I think they are listening to some very, very negative comments from major influencers who sometimes own a Tesla and will talk positively about their own car, mentioning how great the car is but they will still leave the impression in the minds of the folks that are listening to them that electric cars are some kind of a, of a I don't know, a, a part of the overall leftist conspiracy uh, to drive out uh, petrol from our lives. I mean, it's just crazy. So I listen to some, a lot of these guys, Joe Rogan, Tim Poole, Jordan Peterson, Ben Shapiro, Mark Levin, Charlie Kirk, these are the folks I'm talking about, and I believe that Tesla should actually advertise on these shows. Now, most of these guys do their own ads. They speak their own ads. So therefore, they become influencers, even though they're reading copy, or sometimes they're roughly reading copy. But And, and again, people keep saying, oh, you don't need Joe Rogan or some of these guys to advertise, they've already been talking about it. And yeah, that kind of conversation that they have that's just off the cuff part of their show where they're saying how great their Tesla is, is the best advertising you could possibly ever want. That is word of mouth advertising from a, an influencer. Oh my gosh, it, it's priceless, okay? But that's not the same as putting the content out day after day after day and trying to solve the issue the, the issues that are keeping their buyers, those conservative flyover state buyers from going after Tesla. I know you know, if you're, if you're not li living under a rock, that most of the Teslas in the United States are sold in California. 17% market share of all vehicles in California, 17%, okay? And in the rest of the country, it's like, you know, it's, it might be two. So, these are the folks, I think, where the advertising should be taking place. And what you're going to do is you want, um, you want a better way to get from point A to point B. So maybe this is what you'd like the Joe Rogan to say. Here's, here's my pitch. I'm going to read it, okay? Forget everything you currently think about electric cars. There's just a way better to get you from point A to point B. Now, here's the deal. The Tesla Model Y is better in every way than any other car on the market. It has better performance than a Corvette. It has the highest safety ratings of any car ever, including Volvo. You'll save at least $100 a month on fuel and maintenance. The tech on this car is space age in every regard. And it even has over-the-air updates, just like your phone, that keep the car cutting edge forever. Even the sound seat system will blow your mind. A recent analysis showed that the five-year cost of ownership of a Model 3 is about the same as a Toyota Corolla. 
for the same money, which you could, would, would you, which one of those two would you rather own? Well, seriously, the current sticker price on a Model 3 is under 40000 Can you believe that? And then there's a tax rebate of $7,500 that brings the cost down on a Model 3 to just 32490 Well, you know what? You need to drive one of these amazing cars to, be, to really understand how futuristic Tesla really is. There are showrooms everywhere. You can go on the website and find a showroom near you. Near you. Uh, that's tesla.com. And you can find a showroom to go and look at it. Or you know what? You could just go down to Hertz, give Hertz a call and rent one for a day, go out and have fun. And then uh, that'll help you make a decision. So do I think Teslas are great? Well, I do own one. Okay, that's, you know, I threw that copy up, you know, in less than five minutes. I'm sure it can be improved on. I'm sure that a great copy, I'm, I'm a good copywriter, I really am. I'm not a great copywriter. In fact, my ex-partner is a better copywriter than I am. We always let him do the final copy. So somebody that I even know in my own life um, is, a, is a better copywriter than me. So you take that concept or maybe it's an even different concept and you put that kind of stuff out. You Then you can actually modify it to the, to the host. So Joe Rogan's got a different personality than Tim Poole, who has a different personality than, than that. And so yeah, and some of those guys will write their own. They'll write it up so that it fits with their personality. They, that's in their contract. They wanna be able to write it their own way. But this is what the information is that you're trying to get across to these folks in these flyover states who are concerned about destroying the oil industry. Okay. That's number one. That would be my number one thing. I would just do that immediately. It's so fast. You could have those contracts in a week. Uh, you could be uh, putting out the copy a week from Tuesday, <laughs> and then you could be measuring the results the very next day. I mean, I just think it would be incredible. Number two, I would have uh, Tesla create massive, massive, massive amounts of video content. I'd certainly put uh, long form and medium form content on YouTube, uh, stuff that would be, let's say, two minutes to one hour, you know, some of, some of it would be long content because you're really trying to drive home a very complex and important message. Uh, other, other things could be done in five minutes and other things could be done in two. So there's tremendous amount of stuff you could do in terms of long form content. And they could literally, I mean, it was so easy to be putting up a YouTube video a day, maybe even more than that. Okay. So I would be doing that. Um, I would be inviting uh, guests in and doing interviews, man on the street, funny stuff, documentary style, factory walkthroughs, demos, on and on and on. From there, um, you would want to consider to do the short form videos. So the short form videos, usually you're using those, the under one minute videos, 15 second, 30 second or 60 second videos. You're usually using those to drive people to the long form videos or drive them directly to the website or drive them to other long form content. So I would be putting up at least one short every single day on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok with clear calls to action and clear links to the other content. Um, again, these could be so much fun. They could be hilarious. They could be in series. They could be using influencers. And it doesn't have to be one a day. It could be literally dozens a day. And you could put them out. You can put them out like this. They, I, I was just talking to my uh, team down in the Philippines this morning. And they can basically put, it can basically edit a short form video in way less than an hour. Okay. Okay. So number three, demos everywhere. Train, I don't know, a thousand personal folks throughout the United States, and then set up locations where people can take a ride. Um, maybe maybe uh, the, these people will cost $100,000 a year. Um, so you've got, uh, you're spending, um, what did I figure out? That would be a thousand uh, people times $100,000 a year uh, would possibly give you uh, 20 touches a day 300 days a year, 6,000 demos each, 6 million individual touches. Um, and that would be for $10 million, $100 million, $100 million. So 
Um, people have been talking about how much do they need to spend. Well, there will be one way. Now, if you don't want to do $100 million, only hire 200 people to do these demos, and you'll get you know, uh, uh, 1.2 million individual touches instead. But anyway, I believe that these would be, would be fantastic. Um, uh, maybe at the top of my list, maybe it should be the number one. Go back to the incentives. They worked. Why wouldn't we have incentives for current Tesla owners to sell their neighbor? Uh, if there's really a shortage, if, if, if we really don't have enough demand to sell all of this supply that's coming on, why wouldn't we put back the incentives? It, it, you feel, you become uh, even more sold out on the company um, when you're going next door and trying to sell your neighbor. It just makes you, uh, you makes you feel like an owner. If you already feel like an owner because you own the stock, you already feel like an owner because you own the car. But now you're actually going out and help sell cars. Uh, that gives you even more ownership, more fandom. Sure, do the incentives. They're inexpensive ways to get cars sold. I would do that for sure. And then um, I would do, uh, uh, I would pay Tesla owners to do demos. <laughs> okay, a couple of the comments that I received over the last week have been, there's not a, uh, a showroom near me. How do I get a test drive? Well, you can go down to Hertz. As I mentioned before, people can go down to Hertz if there's a Hertz near them, but maybe there's not a Hertz and there's also not a uh, showroom near me, but maybe there is a Tesla owner near me who'd be willing to give a test drive. So you set up a thing on the website where anybody that's willing to give a test drive signs up. Uh, you know where they're located. Uh, they say, hey, you know, just give me an email and I'll set up a time where I can give this person a test ride. And maybe you pay them a hundred bucks a test ride. That should be a good deal. I'm sure it costs way more than a hundred dollars for every test ride that people take at a showroom. So you not only that, you're getting uh, a non-Tesla employee who's talking about the car when they go to have this contact. And then give the person whatever the incentive is that everybody gets if that uh, prospect ends up buying the car. I think it'd be an amazing program. Okay, number six, product placements and game show giveaways. Um, I have joked for a very long time, I think I did it in a video a couple of months ago, that product placements for Tesla could be a problem because if the if on a cop show you give the Tesla to the bad guy, well, the chase will be over shortly because the Tesla is gone and the cop has no shot. Or vice versa, if you give the Tesla to the cop, the cop catches him in like 15 seconds. It's not a very interesting chase. So, so that's a joke, but truly product placements work. They're not expensive. It's a very, very good way to get people to be aware of the product. Um, and uh, the game show giveaways, that's also a good way. Uh, there's also um, stuff you can do, just kind of reminded me right now at like county fairs, we're coming up to the county fair season. So having a Tesla on display at the county fair. I've also seen cars on display in front of my local Costco. So that's another possibility. Okay, number uh, seven. A Tesla podcast, a specific Tesla podcast. You could call it the Elon Musk podcast, or maybe you bring in a specific influencer who's going to do a podcast about Tesla or about all of Elon Musk's enterprises, or I don't care, some format that would be fun and interesting where there's a daily podcast and then Elon pops in at least once a week for 15 minutes to make some comment about whatever that particular podcast is. Um, believe me, this would be a major, major podcast. It might go right to the top of the ratings because why? Because you can use Twitter to promote it and you can use the shorts to promote it. And it's Elon Musk and that's its own promotion. Uh, yes, I think a Tesla podcast would be an easy decision. Well, I could go on like this for hours. Maybe you can tell that. <laughs> but if you took five people like me, in fact, five people better than me, put them in a room for a few hours, they could produce a list like this that would go on and on and on and on and on. And then you can take that list and you can start saying, well, here's the top 10 in that list and then the top five. Then you can go out and execute. And then you hire some amazing copywriters. Are you kidding? They had, what was it last year? Tesla had 3.6 million applications for jobs. <laughs> so do you think there's a couple of copywriters in there you think they could get the very best copywriters in the world i mean among the very best 
to come and work at Tesla. So you get some great copywriters, some great video producers and great video editors. You probably only need a team of a dozen or two maximum. Might even be able to do it with under 10. And then you just put them to work turning out this content. Well, there you go. There's my solution. What's yours? Tell me in the comments. How would you do it? What did I get wrong? What did I get right? What would you add to my list? Uh, I love your comments and you know I'm still working as hard as I can to answer all of them. It's getting harder and harder as the channel has just been growing like this. We passed a million views the other day so in five months. So I was pretty happy with that. Anyway, if you like this content, like, please subscribe, please hit the notify button so you can be made aware of upcoming videos. And then it takes uh, time and energy and help from my folks in the Philippines to put these videos out. So any help you can give me uh, in terms of joining uh, Patreon, that would be a very, very, I'd be thankful for that. I, and I do thank the dozens and dozens who have already done so. Again, this has been Randy Kirk, and it's been great talking to you.